greet you in Jesus' joy. And boy, one of the things that um, that I'd like to do um, is I subscribe to a few podcasts, and I also subscribe to a blog from CNN, and every week it sends me um, a little synopsis of what's been happening. And as you know, if you, unless you've been living in a cave, um, there's been a lot going on this week. And I would just like to sum up a little bit of what's been happening this week and some things that are coming up in the uh, next week. I mean, we all know about the chaos and the fury that has spread across the country about the um, death of George Floyd and other deaths and injustices that uh, minorities have had to endure um, this week uh, in the last few months and dare I say the last three to four hundred years. Um, what's going on now is not new, and we know that, but with the advent of electronic cameras and cell phone cameras and things of this nature, it is now more readily being pushed into the living rooms of America. And it is being pushed into those living rooms in real time and so now America is finally seeing what we as a race of people have known that has been occurring for many, many years. And people are tired of it. They're fed up. And it's unfortunate that uh, some people don't know how to express their displeasure and their dissatisfaction. Uh, but as Pastor Lasagna told me on yesterday that uh, in the absence of positive press, people will take negative press just to get attention. They want to bring attention, they want to bring the country's focus to these ideas and these injustices that have been occurring and we are dismayed first of all that there was ever even a need for the protest in the first place and secondly that some in those numbers of protesters were not there for the right reason Secondly, we see that their coronavirus cases are declining in some parts of the countries. Yay! Amen. Amen. Uh, but experts warn that there are still many more deaths that will occur. So we need to continue uh, sheltering in place. We need to continue social distancing. Uh, we need to continue being wise in our choices. I know people are ready to get back out and get back into uh, 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 social gatherings and friendships and fellowships and family ships. Uh, everybody wants to rub elbows with somebody and I know that being sheltered in place is difficult, especially if you are the type of person that really, really needs social interaction with other people to feel whole. But I want to caution everyone to still be smart. Be as safe as you can. We can't afford to lose any of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, 
President Trump has called off the G7 meeting. Um, he says it is an outdated group of countries. And so take that for what it's worth. On yesterday, we saw the historic uh, launch of the joint venture between NASA and SpaceX launched two astronauts headed for the International Space Station. We applaud that. Amen. 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 On next week, um, the 1st of June, tomorrow, starts for the next six months our hurricane season. And we've already had two named hurricanes um, so far this year, uh, Arthur and Bertha. And they are expecting this to be a very active season of hurricanes with uh, at least six major hurricanes are being predicted. Um, June is Pride Month for those members of the LGBTQ community. Um, 51 years now they have been celebrating Pride Month that was started in Stonewall, New York, uh, in New York City 51 years ago. It is the modern gay rights movement and people might want to know, well, why are you talking about gay rights and this and that? And, you know, there are people too and, you know, gay, lesbian, transsexual, bisexual, queer, whatever you want to call them, they have souls too and God is concerned with them just as he is with us and we love Anyone who finds themselves in that situation, we are concerned about you as well. And you are welcome here to learn about God and what God expects of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. This week we'll see that the um, more of the U.S. primary votes will be cast in uh, D.C., Indiana, Maryland, Montana, a host of States, um, we know that uh, President Trump has no one going up against him, and um, the presumptive candidate uh, for the Democratic side, Joe Biden. Um, effectively, that race is set, but there are some local local uh, races that you need to be concerned about. So. Make sure you get out and vote on Tuesday, or whenever the vote is in your area. Uh, this week they're expecting the uh, McMichaels, Gregory McMichael and um, Travis McMichael and also William Bryan, uh, all face murder charges. They're due in magistrate court over the Ahmaud Arbery case on Thursday. Universal Studios in Orlando is reopening on this week, and so uh, that's going to be the test case, I guess, down in Florida. So they supposedly have things worked out where they're going to be <coughs> demonstrating social distancing as best as they can. So just be careful. If you are venturing out into some of these places that are reopening, be safe, wear your mask. Practice social distancing um, and stay prayed up. Amen. 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 Um, on Thursday, 100 years ago, the women received the right to vote. Amen. 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 Women received the right to vote. They've had the right to vote now for 100 years, and we want women and men everywhere to exercise that right this year and every time the polls are open find your face in the place your feet under your seat and your smile as you walk down the aisle to cast your vote amen yeah the uh jobs report is grim unemployment's at an all-time high but we 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 knew about that amen um, and the jobs report is set to come out on Friday. 
is expected to be the highest ever unemployment rate. So keep your fellow brothers and sisters prayed up and um, we see the theme that we're in this together and it's never been more true that we are all in this together. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Have you ever been forced to sit and wait on something? <laughs> hmm? How many people like to wait? Mm -hmm. Yeah, raise your hand if you are a happy waiter. No, I am not. I don't like to wait. I want what I want and I want it now. Absolutely. Amen. And I know many of you share that uh, along with me. Um, everyone should be saying that they don't like to wait because it, it, it's true. We don't like standing in line. Yeah. Uh, um, we don't like, we want what we want, right? Yes, We're all waiting to see what's going to happen with the COVID-19 and how it will continue to affect us. I heard on today, uh, not today, but on this week, on one of the podcast that I subscribe to that COVID-19 is probably going to be with us for years and years and years just like uh, chicken pox, the flu, measles. Um, there's some things we're going to make some inroads. They even may even come up with a vaccine uh, like the flu but you're probably going to have to get it every year just like the flu. But we stay prayed up about that. We're waiting to see what's going to happen in this country with all of the Black Lives Matter movement and the criminal justice wheels turning. Uh, we're waiting to see what the end is going to be. I hate waiting. I know you do as well. I know that a lot of people are tired of the status quo. We as a people are tired of the immense headlines over the last killing, whatever it might be, we have a long list of names now. Nobody wants their name on that list, but everybody knows the names. When you start talking about the Floyds and Aubrey's and all of the names, Philando Castile and all of the names that just goes on and on and on and even names that we don't know about before cell phones became prevalent and all the ones that got swept under the rug, brothers and sisters who were beaten, raped, killed, and justice was not meted out in those instances. Unfortunately, waiting is a part of life, and sometimes God makes us wait. God doesn't always answer our prayers right away. We can pray. We want what we want when we want it, and we want it now, but sometimes God just says yes, and sometimes God says no, and sometimes God says not yet. Wait on the Lord. While we don't want to run out and get ahead of God, we also don't want to remain idle and grow stagnant either. Today I want to answer the question, what do you do while you're waiting on God? The title of today's message is, While Waiting on God, I Can, and you fill in the blank. While Waiting on God, I Can. Let us turn in our Bibles to the book of Acts, the first chapter, and start at the first verse. 
Acts 1 and 1. And I will read from the New International Version. And I want to preface this by letting you know that uh, 40 days ago, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday. Why is that important? Today is what is known as, well, this week, Ascension Thursday. On Thursday, the 40th day after Resurrection Sunday, is when Jesus went home to glory. It's when he left and said, okay, I've given you your final instructions. I want you to stay here and wait on the Holy Spirit. I'm going home to the Father, and I'm going to send the Comforter. In Acts 1 and 1, it is written by Luke, and he writes, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen, after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about, for John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. Amen. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Seems like we just heard this in Sunday school. <laughs> yeah. Verse 9 says, After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amen. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas the son of James. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. Acts starts out by telling us about Jesus showing himself to people for 40 days after the resurrection. Uh, 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 it talks about the times that Jesus spoke to them. He told them to wait until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. 
They asked if he was getting ready to rule as the king of kings in Israel. And Jesus told them that it was not for them to know the place or to know the times and the dates, but it was their place to be his witnesses to the world. Amen. Huh? And he's still telling us that today. It is time for us to be his witnesses to the world. Witnesses of Jehovah. Not, not those. They watched Jesus taken up into heaven. There were two men by them and they asked why they were still watching the sky. They reminded them and us that Jesus is coming back. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Jesus is coming back. Glory, glory, hallelujah. That's good news. Amen. Uh, 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 the 11 remaining apostles, Jesus' mother, brothers and others, they were waiting in the upper room, the very same upper room where the Last Supper occurred. This was at uh, uh, Mark's house, at his mother's house, in the upstairs room that she had prepared for them. Uh, there was about 120 people waiting back in Jerusalem. And the important thing to notice is that they did not just hang out and wait. They did something. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice the three things that they did while waiting on God. And do the same while we are waiting to see what is going to happen with COVID-19 with Black Lives Matter, with all the concerns that we have in this world on today, there are three things we can do while we wait. Amen. Verse 14 says, they all joined together constantly in prayer, mm -hmm. along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. While waiting on God, I can pray. It would have been easy for them to say, why pray? Jesus has already promised us the Holy Spirit. But they didn't do that. They prayed. Mm -hmm. They knew the promise was coming, yet they still prayed. We often forget the importance of prayer in our times of waiting on God. We will often pray about a subject once and then never bring it before God again. God honors persistent prayer. Amen. Now you can, if you got it like that, if your faith is that strong, bring it before God and leave it with Him and not worry. That's admirable. That's admirable. But you know, we hate to wait. Huh? Talk to me somebody. I ordered a brand new car, a car that's not even out yet, put a deposit down on it. They told me it was going to be here in 15 months. <laughs> Woo! I, I, I couldn't wait. You know, last month I bought another car, got my money back. But waiting is hard. Amen? Amen? Amen. God honors persistent prayer. In verse 16, it says, And said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. This is Peter addressing the brethren. With the payment that he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, 
and his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, Akeldama. That is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in it. And may another take his place of leadership. You'll find that in Psalms 69 and 25 and also in Psalm 109 and 8. For you Bible scholars, write that down, look it up later. While waiting on God, I can study the word. While waiting on God, I can pray, I can study the word. How many of your questions and concerns pertaining to the virus are answered in scripture? Sometimes we seem to have many more questions than answers in life, don't we? Amen. Amen. We pray and pray for an answer and seem to never find them. Many times the answers to our questions are in the Word of God. During these challenging days, we must continue to study Scripture individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. Verses 21 through 26 say, Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time uh, the Lord Jesus was living among us. They needed a replacement for Judas. Beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us, for one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men. Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias, when they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, they voted, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the 11 apostles. While waiting on God, I can pray, mm -hmm. I can study the word, and I can work. All right. Amen. 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 The apostles were one man short because of Judas's betrayal, uh, because of his suicide, and the scripture in Psalms told them to choose his replacement. There were two requirements for the successor. He had to have had a part in Jesus' earthly ministry, and he had to be a witness to the ascension. The apostles cast lots, which was in the Old Testament times, meaning that they were voting their choice. Matthias was chosen. And I want you to notice that not only did the apostles pray, not only did the apostles study while they were waiting, but they also continued to take care of the business that needed to be done. They continued to uh, move the ministry forward. They continued to uh, 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 take on the great commission by making disciples. They, nothing stopped. The work of God must go forward, just as in this time of coronavirus and in this time of Black Lives Matter, we must continue to move forward. We cannot stagnate. The word of God is true, and it must go forward. Amen. Anybody? Amen. While waiting on God, I can pray. While waiting on God, I can study the Word of God. While waiting on God, I can work. While waiting on God, I can pray until something happens. Mm -hmm. 
While waiting on God, I can study to show myself approved. While waiting on God, I can work while it's day, for the night comes when no man can work. While waiting on God, I can fast and sacrifice before the Lord. While waiting on God, I can testify to the goodness of Jesus. While waiting on God, I can make disciples for the kingdom of God. 